Hello and welcome. My name is Viktor Yudin and I'm a software developer working on Omniverse. NVIDIA Omniverse is a powerful real-time simulation and collaboration platform for 3D production pipelines based on Pixar's Universal Scene Description and NVIDIA RTX. It includes various applications and the framework to build flexible extensions. Omniverse applications are made to address specific workflows. With little effort, developers can quickly create custom applications. To build the graphical user interface, we developed a framework called Omni UI. This tutorial will show you how we create user interfaces for both Omniverse applications and Kit extensions. Let's get started. Omni UI is a toolkit for creating cross platform graphical user interfaces that run in Omniverse applications. It's a modern, fast and lightweight way to build user interfaces with using the power of Python. We use it for all the UI elements in Omniverse Kit applications like Create and View. It leverages the DirectX 12 and Vulkan APIs and it's powered by Dear Imgui. Thanks to Python, Omni UI is advanced yet simple to use. The code is easy to read and write, even for complex interfaces. It features a declarative syntax and hot reloading. No need to recompile or restart anything. Omni UI always keeps its result in sync with the code and allows building user interfaces for any supported platforms using the same set of tools and APIs. Omni UI has a robust and powerful approach to customizing the look and appearance of widgets, which can be applied to the whole application or specific widgets. Let's get started by looking at Omni UI widgets. A widget represents a part of the application user interface. It's the atomic element for creating user interfaces in Omni UI. Widgets display data and status information and receive user input. They provide a container for other widgets to be grouped together. They work seamlessly in Python and the declarative syntax focuses your code on the intent, leaving Omni UI to deal with the detail. The simplest widget is label. It's used for displaying text. To place the widget in the user interface, you only have to construct the object in code. You don't need to explicitly define and assign a variable. The simplest widget is label. It's used for displaying text. To place the widget in the user interface, you only have to construct the object in code. You don't need to explicitly define and assign a variable. The visual appearance of the label can be configured in various ways. The simplest option to modify it is to pass keyword arguments to the constructor. This initializes the properties of the widget with a single statement. The resulting code is simpler and easier to read. Another widget that displays data is the image widget. It's designed to show an image in the user interface. It can read binary or vector image files from either the file system or Nucleus server. It's possible to set widget properties the usual Python way. A property behaves like a class data member. The button widget performs a user action when it's pressed. By default, the widget takes up as much space as it needs. It's possible to give the widget a size with the width or height property. For example, you can create a button with a height of 100 pixels. To perform an action when the user presses the button, you set a callback. The callback is either a traditional function or lambda function or a callable object. For example, when the user clicks the button, the label is changed. Omni UI covers a vast range of user interface types. To make custom widgets, it's possible to combine one or more of the core widgets into widgets hierarchy. Some of the widgets can be containers for other widgets. Let's learn about that in the next chapter. Omni UI has a very elegant and flexible layout management system to describe how widgets are laid out in an application's user interface. 
The system positions and resizes child widgets when the amount of space available for them changes, ensuring they are properly arranged. All the widgets that are derived from the class container provide space for other widgets. Each widget returns its size requirements to the parent container, and the container distributes the available space accordingly. The size can be fixed or relative. Containers ensure the cascading and inheritance of the Omni UI styling system are respected. We will talk about it more in the next chapter. It's possible to combine and embed multiple containers to build complex nested layout. The layout management system has a unique syntax that makes the code highly readable. Let's have a look at it on the next slide. To group widgets together we use stacks. Stacks place the widget horizontally, vertically or back to front. In this example we use horizontal stack. It lays the widgets out from left to right and distributes the available space equally. By default widgets take up as much space as they need. It's possible to set the widget size. The stack will compute the proper layout and will distribute the space according to the requested size. Even when the requested size is zero, the stack provides the minimal possible size to fit the widget's content. By default, the size is in pixels, but percentages can also be used. Using a percentage unit makes it possible to specify the size relative to the parent size. It's easy to mix different size units in the same container. Another size unit makes it possible to quickly slice the available area into proportional parts. As a result, the creation of fully responsive and flexible layouts becomes simple. The fractional values will be divided between the remaining space left over after other widgets have taken the space they need. To add space between widgets, Omni UI includes a spacer widget. When used in a stack, the spacer will expand and will push other widgets to provide a gap between them. Stacks are very powerful, but they become even more powerful when combined with other stacks. They can be nested in order to build really complex user interfaces. Omni UI has a dedicated stack type for creating overlapping widgets, which is useful if you want to place something over a picture. The children of this stack are layered on top of each other. For example, we could put an image underneath some layout. Most modern user interfaces need to be quite dynamic, and Omni UI supports this by providing a special type of container called frame. Unlike stacks, frames can only have a single child. When pushing a child during some event, it will dynamically replace the existing child of the frame. Omni UI has several kinds of frame. The collapsible frame is handy to display collapsible content panels for presenting information in a limited amount of space. Scrolling and canvas frames are used to display content that is bigger than the available space. If the widget exceeds the frame size, the scrolling frame provides scroll bar. The canvas frame allows panning and zooming of the content with the mouse. Omni UI has containers that arrange their child widgets in a grid. The grid direction is the direction it will grow when creating more children. Vertical grid grows from top to bottom. The horizontal grid needs a horizontal scroll bar to navigate the children. Omni UI style system is a powerful mechanism that describes how the widgets are to be displayed. It allows the appearance of widgets to be customized. The main concepts like cascading and inheritance are inspired by CSS. The style can be local to the widget, global to the application or a mixture of both. If several style sheets are set at different layout levels, Omni UI derives the effective style from all the parent widgets where the style is set. It's fully customizable by type, name or the state of the widget. The style syntax is straightforward. It's a Python dictionary with the style field name and value. This very simple example sets the color of the label. When the style is set on the parent widget, it's propagated to its children. It's possible to set the style depending on the type of the widget. In this example, the rule specifies that the label should use a green color and the button label should use a blue-green color. It's also possible to set the style based on the widget state in the style rule. An example might be, you want the color of the label to be white when it's hovered over. 
It's possible to target a specific widget by name. In this example, the yellow label has the name property set and the yellow style rule targets this widget by name. Style can be set on parent widgets and child widgets. An arbitrary widget's effective style is obtained by merging the style set on the widget's ancestors. It means it's possible to set style overrides. In this example, the blue button style forces it to have white text although the parent styles provide blue-green color. OmniUI's styling system can perform all kinds of customizations of specific widgets and applications. This is the list of available style names and modes. The styling system can provide a distinctive look and feel for the application without modifying the layout. OmniUI has a set of widgets that use a model view pattern to separate data from the way it's presented to the user. The separation of data gives developers more flexibility to customize the model and allows a wide range of data sources to be used with existing widgets. The most commonly used model-based widgets are fields and sliders. They are used to accept a line of text input. They are value type specific and they use a value-based model to communicate with a source of data. Let's learn a bit more about the value-based model. The value-based model provides an interface with a single value to the widget. It's a central component of the model view pattern used in many single value widgets like field and slider. It's a dynamic data structure independent of the user interface. And although it's designed to be a bridge between the actual data value and the user interface, it can also be implemented to hold the data value. The model also notifies all linked widgets about data changes. Since the model is separated from the widget, the user should perform all the operations with the model-based widget's content through the model. Many widgets can use the same model, in this way their content is linked. The second widget reflects the editing of the first one because the data is the same. The model can be re-implemented fully or partially in Python to provide more precise control in modifying the data. For example, it's possible to implement a model that tracks a specific attribute in a USD stage. In this example, the model makes the text green when the user starts editing. Some widgets need more complex data than a single value. For example, the color widget requires four values. OmniUI provides an item model for this. Item model provides an interface to data that is flexible enough to handle tables, lists, and trees. No matter how the data is stored in an underlying data structure, the item model represents the data as a structure containing the items. With the item, it's possible to get the value model which provides a single value. This item model allows OmniUI to track the changes in the underlying data structure in general or in elements of this data. The simplest example of using the item model is the multi-field widget. It contains a text field for each item of the model. It's also possible to access each item's value model and use it in other model-based widgets. It's possible to use the same item model in the widgets of an entirely different kind. They obtain the same data from the model and present them to the user in a different way. The model can be easily re-implemented in Python. The example shows a minimal model that holds a list of strings and can be used to present a list widget to the user. The item model can manage more complex tree structures of items containing other items and arbitrary data. It's suitable for hierarchical data structures like a file system or USD stage hierarchy. This is the minimal model implementation that holds a hierarchical structure of strings and can be used in a tree widget. Generally, the widget is responsible for the presentation of model data to the user. To allow some flexibility, OmniUI supports delegates. A delegate is a separate object defined by an abstract class that provides standard interfaces responsible for creating widgets for individual items so that they can be customized. This example is a minimal implementation of delegate for tree view that creates a custom branch icon for the tree view item. 
When the item in the model is changed, the Treeview widget calls the delegate and it reconstructs the specific part of the widget. That's it. As a conclusion, Omni UI is a must try for all the Omniverse enthusiasts out there. It's feature complete and it's possible to create almost any kind of interface with it. It lets developers specify the user interface in a simple declarative way, which reduces hundreds of code lines to just a few, simplifying the workflows for developers. This presentation is entirely made with Omni UI as a standalone kit application, and it will be available soon. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.